How's it going everybody? I hope you're doing great today. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and this is that car vlog channel. And this video is gas super video number two on the channel. Before we get started, please excuse the, uh, the wind noise and any audio problems because it is windy and uh, my wireless mic is not operating properly. So here goes. So right now at the time of filming this video, it is the second half of March, 2023. Now we all know that last summer, 2022, gas prices were insane. $4 plus a gallon, almost five bucks a gallon, at least here in Tennessee in the South. It was insane. And during that time I decided I have access to some fuel efficient vehicles. I'll put some of those up on the channel. That way if somebody's out there looking for something fuel efficient during these gas price problems, they got somewhere to look for, you know, possible choices. Like I said, it's currently the second half of March 2023, and although gas prices are not at summer of 2022 prices, they are still floating right around the $3 per gallon mark, at least here in East Tennessee. And so I thought I'd bring you gas super video number two. The subject vehicle of today's video, this is a 2021 Kia Rio. Now, like I said, this is 2023, but this is the same car. They're still making this one right now in 2023. You can still buy this body style. Now, before I get into this review, Yes, I know that there are problems with these Kia cars. I haven't done enough research to know if the 21 Rios are a part of the lack of immobilizer problem and easy theft problem. And I know that some insurance companies won't insure them at this time and other insurance companies that are insuring them are charging ridiculous rates. So that is something to keep in mind if you're looking at this. However, I still wanted to make a video on this car because it is a great contender in the fuel economy game. So now we'll start out like I normally do in my car reviews, looking at the exterior styling of the car. Now, once again, this is a 2021, although technically still 2023, because they're still making this Kia Rio. This is Kia's compact sedan. And if we take a walk around the scene, you can tell it is actually a somewhat attractive car. It's definitely not the ugliest thing in the world. Now, it's not going to have some of the niceties that you're going to have on higher level vehicles, like these taillights are not LED. They are fully incandescent, but they're decent looking. You do get a backup camera on this thing because everything 2018 or later has to have one. If you look up at the roof here, it does have the radio antenna mount on the roof. There's supposed to be a mast on that, but I've never seen the mast for this particular Kia Rio. It's gone missing before I got my hands on it. And down here looking at the wheels, you can tell these are steel wheels with just these plastic wood covers, but they're not the worst looking things in the world. They're actually pretty decent looking. You have to excuse the fact that this car is a little dirty. This car gets used every day. It's a working vehicle. Coming around to the front, it does have decent styling up here. You can see Kia's signature, a little pinched grill there where it comes together in the middle. You guys should have a much bigger piece of grill down here. That's actually going to let the majority of your air into the radiator. Decent looking headlights and turn signals. Fairly stylish. Also not LEDs. It is a budget compact car. You do have body color door handles on this, which I do like. I don't, I don't think I've seen one of these that have the black door handles. So unlike like Nissan on them that will just put black door handles on the cheaper level of car. These all have their body color handles. It actually looks really good on this car. Getting in the car, here's the key. Now this is your lowest level Rio that you can get. I believe they call it the LX, although there's not an LX badge on the back. There is another level up, it's called the S, but this is not that level. So the features I'm gonna show you on this car are the base level LX features, and there's not gonna be as many as are on, this, on the Rio S. So here's your key for the car. It is still a steel key. I'm going to assume there's an immobilizer chip in this key. Once again, I have not done enough research to know whether or not these 21 and up key Rios are part of the stolen Kia's issue. Now there's a power lock, but on this base of the base model, you're unlocking the car with the key. As we're getting in, looking at the door panel here, there's not much to see here. It does have power windows, power mirrors, power locks. That's a nice thing to have. It does have a little storage pocket down here. You got your speaker in the door. Now remember, this is a very cheap car. This is a sub $20,000 car. So you have hard plastic everywhere. Everywhere on this car is hard, cheap plastic. There's not even anything soft touch here. Obviously it looks a little bit bendy if you push on it, but it's, it's hard plastic. As we make our way inside to the driver's seat, you can see the seat actually has this neat little pattern here on the back and on the, the butt part of the seat here. It has some bolstering because cars just have bolstering now. It's a decent looking seat. Now it is fully manually operated. Here's your up and down, here's your back. And of course, here's your slider. You do have two levers right here in front of that seat, one for the trunk, one for the fuel door. And your floor mats are nice. They do have the Rio embroidered on them, so they're not completely blank and boring. And as we sit down in the interior, I will go ahead and just warn you all, this car is 
not perfectly clean there there is evidence of it being used this thing is used every day now back to the interior review so over here to the left steering wheel you've got some buttons two of them are blank two of them are not you got your brightness adjuster for the gauges and your traction off button right here looking right at the steering wheel on the left you got all your controls for your radio your phone and on the right side you you see there's just a button for your trip odometer and to reset everything now these cars are available with cruise control and as you add options you can add cruise control as an option as it is not standard on your base kia those buttons would be right here but it is not also also most likely your buttons for safety features such as lane keeping assist and adaptive screws and all that are going to be in here as well but this car once again does not have all the safety features like your higher trim is going to have however we look back it's not a horrible looking steering wheel it's obviously not i wouldn't call it beautiful but it's not bad looking so you've got this little silver accent on the bottom it's a decent looking wheel looking at the gauges let's start the car up it doesn't tell if it's bings and bongs and as you can see here very simple gauge cluster your tachometer and temp gauge over here on the right and your speedometer and fuel gauge on the left and then you do have the center display which which in this vehicle is going to display some very basic information you got your gear position up top there you can see that changes and move the shifter there's your fuel range your average fuel economy um this thing can get better than that it's just all, not always driven very um gently temp in the bottom as well as your overall mileage if i push the trip button on the steering wheel it's going to change information so there's your trip a trip b there's of course I'm not really sure what in the world that is but it's there and i don't know what that's for either but that's all the information you're going to get in that center screen it's pretty much just the stuff you need to know in a base model vehicle moving over to the center of the car you do have your eight inch infotainment screen which does feature wireless android auto and apple carplay in a base model car so that's actually a pretty nice thing to have you do have some hard controls down here for your radio your media um your favorite star right here some setup button volume and power uh, tuner knob things like that so there are, there are some physical controls down here it's not all done on the screen however it is a touch screen if you click right here you can go into your menus there you go android auto apple carplay not active because there's not a phone connected you get a little voice memo there scroll over there's your setup not a lot of apps here but they are there go hit our home button there and it takes us back here your phone setup going to setup it actually does have wi-fi capability there's your bluetooth connections and just a few simple settings not a whole lot going on here in the infotainment screen but it is a pretty good screen it's nice and vivid it's easy to use easy to read and it's decently responsive to your touch it's not instant like a smartphone but it's pretty dang quick while we're here if we throw the car into reverse here's your backup cam footage you can see it's actually pretty good it is kind of grainy it's not amazing but once again this is an economy car it's not going to be perfect but you can see as i turn the steering wheel the trajectory lines do turn with the wheel very nice shows you exactly how you're going to line that car up in any given parking space down from that here's your climate controls and i do kind of like the way these look but they are very simple climate controls here's your temperature knob ac button fan speed control as well as your recirculate button you turn that on or off air positioning and your rear defroster button very simple single zone climate control if you do step up to the s you can actually get dual zone in this little car not bad going down even further from there you have a little you have a little storage shelf up here with a rubberized pad for storing small stuff down here you do have one single usb port for charging and presumably maybe even audio connection to the right of that open this door you do have a 12 volt round port so you do have a little bit of charging in the front of this car and you see down below those charging ports you do have another small storage well here with a honestly this feels more like hard plastic than that does up there but it's down there it's for you to store stuff if you need it which is a pretty handy spot back from there in front of your automatic shifter you do have a row of buttons most of them blank but there's one here marked sport and if i push that button little light pops up in the tachometer says sport mode but i have yet to figure out why this car has a sport mode or what it even does because I, I can't feel it do anything at all like at all behind that is the automatic shifter very simple forwards and backwards nothing special there if you do pull it down here though you can pop it over here and you get manual selection mode bump it up or down however you need it to change the gears manually although this thing doesn't have gears it has a cvt back behind the shifter you do have dual cup holders and a manual hand operated parking brake instead of a button i love that and a little storage cubby behind there it's not covered there is no lid it's just open it's not incredibly huge there is a like a felt liner in the bottom of this part but that's all you have for center storage in this car over on the right hand side of the dashboard you don't have very much you do have this glove box here it opens up it is not lockable and it's a decent sized glove box it's not insanely huge but i've seen smaller zooming out and looking at the overall design of the dash this is actually a halfway decent design i mean this is an economy car it could have been made much much uglier and it's actually i think i kind of like the design of the dash on this car it's not bad 
Now, of course, your infotainment screen, like on a lot of cars, does look more like a tablet that's been glued to the dash than a properly integrated screen. But it's it's okay. It doesn't stick up and hinder the view or anything. It's it's not bad. It's it's fine. Going up towards the ceiling, you do have a pretty standard rear view mirror. Nothing special there. You do have your sunglass holder, and there are my sunglasses. You have your interior dome lights, and the driver and passenger both have visor with a mirror here, so you can pull it over and look at yourself. And you have a little place to stick cards here. Now you do have a mirror light. It's up here on the ceiling above the visor. You do have to turn it on manually. You just hit the button, and it turns on. Flip the other way, it turns off. Or you don't even have to turn it off manually. You just have to turn it on, and then when you close the visor, it hits the button for you. Now, higher Kia models, such as the Stinger, which I reviewed a few months ago, actually this light it does not have a switch on it. It automatically comes on when you slide the mirror open and closed. However, on this economy car, you do have to operate that manually. That's not a big deal. Jumping into the rear of the Rio, and here you can see, now this seat is in my position. I am a six foot and change driver. You know, I'm definitely not short. I'm not incredibly tall, but I'm definitely not short. This is where I'm gonna sit to drive this thing. And you can see that's how my hand fits in that gap. There's not a lot of legroom in this car, which is why you're not gonna see me sit down in this one today. Smaller adults, if you're willing to scoot up, maybe can fit back here, same with children, pets, or just extra cargo. Now your seat design does continue in the rear. I do like that they included the rear in that. And it can theoretically sit three across, although I'm not so sure I would wanna do that. I do like here on the center seatbelt buckle, they put center there, so there's no mystery as to which one is which out of these two right here. You know exactly. Obviously this is an economy car, so there are no climate vents or controls on the back of that console, but it's a pretty small cabin. Yeah, everybody should feel the temperature pretty soon. You do have a map pocket here on the back of the passenger seat, however, not on the back of the driver's seat. Up here on the ceiling, nothing special. Here's the center dome light. That's all you get on the ceiling of this car. All right, now to get into the trunk, now there is no keyhole on the back of the car. And this one that only has the regular key, you do have to pull the lever in front of the driver's seat to open it up. I assume that on higher trim cars with more options that have the keyless entry remote, you can just pop it with the remote. But on this car, you must pull the lever. Pull that lever, she opens up. And here is the trunk of the Kia Rio. There's nothing really to note back here. Nothing special. You do have a tie down here on this side and you have one just like it on the other side. So if you do have to tie something small down, you don't want to roll it around, you can do that. But you're not getting a lot of room and there's no features back here. If we pull up on the floor, you do have a compact spare, which is nice. Some cars don't have spares, but it's an economy car. It's not a high-end sports car. You get a spare. Otherwise, really nothing of note back here. It's just a useful cargo area. It's not insanely huge, but it's not insanely small. You can still pack three to four people's luggage in here for a weekend trip and be just fine driving this car somewhere for the weekend. Okay, and now here we are at the front, the business end to talk about the engine. Here you have your 1.6 liter four cylinder producing 120 horsepower and 112 pound feet of torque. Once again, economy car. Now this generation Kia Rio is rated at 32 miles per gallon city, 41 highway, 36 combined. And I see, I find that to be mostly true. Now, once again, I've driven this car around for several months and although I don't abuse vehicles, I'm also not, you know, a granny about it. I do drive the car pretty, you know, pretty well. So I don't achieve that 36 combined. I've been achieving right around 32 to 34 miles per gallon on average, most of the time in this car, which is still really, really good. Now this engine is mated to what Kia calls an IVT, an intelligent variable transmission, it is essentially a CVT transmission. There is no six speed, seven speed, whatever. And uh, as far as I can tell, there is also no manual option. Now a few more points directly from Kia's website regarding the Kia Rio LX versus the S. Now once again, this is the LX trim, so it doesn't have very much. Now your LX trim starts in 2023 at right around 16,700. And its feature list is pretty short. Once again, I showed you the 8-inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are very nice. In fact, the only way to have navigation on the screen in this car is to have your Android Auto hooked up, which, I mean, nice feature now you do also get automatic headlights in this car i do like it does have auto headlights with even on this very low option car and your side view mirrors are heated along with your rear window defroster not not required to add that as an option it's just part of the car now if we step over to the s trim that's going to start right around seventeen thousand four hundred dollars and this is all according to kia's website which i have up on my phone and once again instead of that steel that straight steel key you do get remote keyless injury entry i have seen that key on a 22 model and it is a switchblade key keyless entry also has 
that trunk release on it. You do get the cruise control. You do get a 60-40 split folding rear seat. In this one, that seat does not fold. It is fixed in place. And you get a lot more safety options. This one pretty much doesn't have any. It has airbag. That's really about it. It has airbags and seat belts. It's up to you. This one has got automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. It's got lane keep assist. Um, Kia calls it following assist, but it's pretty much adaptive cruise. It'll give you push button start, LED headlights, and 15 inch alloy wheels instead of these 15 inch steel wheels with covers. So those are just a few of the options you get on the S trim over the LX. Anyway, that's pretty much everything you need to know as far as the interior, exterior, powertrain, and features of the car. Let's get out on the road and see what this thing is like to drive. I suspect it's gonna be a lot like driving an economy car. All right, get out on the road and drive the 2021 slash 2223 Kia Rio LX. The first thing I gotta say about this car is for an economy car, it is pretty comfortable and pretty roomy. I mean, I'm not a small guy, you see I've got a decent amount of leg room down here. It's not terrible. My head's not touching the ceiling. And I'm, have, and I'm not having to lean extremely far back. This is actually not a bad car to spend time in as far as small cars go. Now there is some, you know, stiffness of the suspension. It is an economy car. It's not, you know, a cushy luxury car with soft, absorbent suspension. But at the same time, it's also not a high-end sports car. It's got the stiff handling suspension. It's, it's right there somewhere in the middle. It's decent enough. You could probably take a decently long road trip in this thing without much of a problem as far as comfort, and you still get the fuel economy benefit. Taking off, you see it does make a lot of noise, and it's not incredibly fast. But it will get out of the way if you need it to. It'll get up to speed. It'll pass cars. No problem. 120 horsepower isn't a lot. Of course, this car isn't a lot. It doesn't weigh very much, so it shouldn't have any problem pulling itself along. As far as visibility is concerned, it's what you'd expect out of a small car. It's actually pretty good. You got a nice view out of the rear view mirror there. Side view mirrors are small, but they go with the car. Everything else is perfectly fine. As far as steering is concerned, you see it's actually pretty responsive. I mean, obviously it's not sports car responsive, but it's actually pretty decent. It's not very hesitant. It does what you tell it to do. Now, one interesting thing that this Kia Rio has going on, and I think I've seen it on other Kia models before, it's kind of interesting. It has this weird brake hold feature. So as you can see, I got my foot on the brake right now. I'm going to pull my foot off the brake, but the car's not going to start rolling yet. Now it starts to roll. It's like two to three seconds it actually holds the brake and keeps the brake lights on after you've released the pedal. Now, of course, if you immediately go from brake to gas, it will release the brakes. But it's kind of an interesting thing. I've never really seen that before until I got into this car, a car that just has this brake hold every time you release the brake pedal. Now, of course, that does come in handy if you're sitting on a hill and you're worried about coasting into the person in front of or behind you, depending on, you know, which way the hill is. Um, although not as much concern in automatic as it would be a manual. Not really sure why they design that into this car it's just kind of an interesting thing kind of weird but you get used to it pretty quickly it's not really that bad just yeah kind of worth pointing out because it is a little odd now i will say one thing that surprises me about the rio is it's how nimble it is it's actually as far as compact cars go it's actually kind of nimble obviously it's not a sports car but it really doesn't have that much of a problem around curves now you obviously you don't want to go crazy and take curves incredibly fast but, I mean, it can handle curves pretty well. Just be mindful, it is an economy car, it is kind of light, and it has, you know, economy car tires on it. So don't be going insanely crazy, but, I mean, it could certainly be worse than what it is as far as handling is concerned. So what's my overall opinion of being in, driving this car, and living with this car? Because, like I say, I've driven this car around for the last several months. Um, I'm actually driving something different now but I wanted to go ahead and get this video out while I could still get access to this car, which is why things may also seem kind of unprepared. But anyway, overall opinion of this car. It is a surprisingly good car. Now people laugh at Kia, Hyundai, you know, oh, they're dinky little cars, dinky little Korean cars. You know, they're not much to talk about. And while that may be mostly true, you have to also think about the class of car you're talking about. This is a sub $20,000 compact, or Kia calls it subcompact car. 
Now this is, of course is once again your base model, but it still has a few basic convenience and entertainment features in it from, from the get-go. You do have your automatic headlights, you've got your phone and radio controls on the wheel, it even has voice command button here. And for a car that starts at $16,000, you get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto already baked into the infotainment in this car for less than $20,000. That's, I mean, that's pretty nice. Once again, it's a mostly comfortable vehicle. You, it's not the tightest fit. Now, if you do have two people side by side, especially if they're two larger people like me, yeah, you're gonna be close, but you have to expect that in a car like this. But my overall opinion of this car, considering the type of vehicle it is, I like it. Now, once again, it being a Kia Rio, a modern Kia, I'm not done enough research to know if the 21 Rios are a part of that immobilizer issue where they're getting stolen all the time. Um, that'd be something to look into if you're in the market for one of these. And if you do end up getting one, just make sure that either it does have the immobilizer or you may have to put an aftermarket alarm system on it. Most people don't recommend doing that, especially on modern cars, but it may be worth it if it means not getting your car stolen. And of course, all the standard safety measures, parking well lit areas, you know, if it's at your house, park it in a garage if you can or have cameras on it, you know, whatever. You do whatever you can to protect it. And also shop around for insurance because a lot of companies are either not going to insure it or they're gonna charge some outlandish rates because Kias and Hyundais are highly stolen vehicles now. But that's about it. That's pretty much all I've got to say about this car. It's decent. I'm not gonna call it nice or beautiful or insanely comfortable, but for what it is, it's decent and it seems like a pretty good option to put on a compact car shopping list. All right, folks, so there you have it. That is the current generation, at least as of now in 2023, Kia Rio. Like I said a second ago, as far as compacts or subcompacts go, I actually do kind of like this car. It's decently styled. It's got a decent amount of power for what it is. It's somewhat comfortable inside. Your base model does come with a, with a handful of basic features right out of the box. And of course, if you step up to that S trim, then you get most of the safety features that you come to expect from modern cars nowadays. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, you need to buy another car, but the gas prices are kind of getting to you, this may be worth putting on your compact car shopping list if that's what you're looking for. The biggest downside I see with this is of course that whole Kias and Hyundais getting stolen thing. So once again, no matter what Kia or Hyundai for that matter model that you're looking at, definitely kind of do a little research and see whether or not that's gonna be part of that problem and what you need to do about that if you do decide to buy that car anyways. Anyways folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative for you and it helps you to make a decision when you go out to shop for your next compact car. If you like this video and you want to see more like it on the channel, if you want to see more from me, go back to the channel, check out the rest of the videos I've got. I've got a bunch of car reviews, projects, car shows, family vehicles, you name it. i got probably something for everybody on there, so go check it out. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, hit that notification bell so you'll get notified when videos go up. Also follow over on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel. It's another great way to get notified when new videos are posted on the channel. Anyways, thanks y'all so much for watching and happy shopping.